This is what the inside of a dolphin vagina looks like. Females have a fully functioning clitoris that's located about here. We haven't invented anything. We just haven't. You know, animals have done it all. There is oral sex, for example, which is often seen in nature, um, is seen in bats. And when they do, the, the success of pregnancy actually increases. Some fish, the males have little whiskers in their mouth that they use to tickle the female genitalia for the exact same reason. <music> Dolphins have sex all the time. Uh, they have sex not just males with females, but also females with females and males with males. Females have been observing um, rubbing each other's clitorises with their snouts and their flippers. Um, and they have also uh, been observed masturbating, which basically um, involves them finding objects on the forest floor that they can rub up against. We did this study looking at the dolphin clitoris, the morphology of the dolphin clitoris. What we found was very definite evidence that the clitoris seems to be functioning for pleasure. The fact that animals have sex outside of just purely reproductive purposes would generally be a good indication that there's, there's another goal to that sexual interaction, right? And many people have argued this, that, that they're practicing for, for the real thing. It might be also some kind of social cohesion. Monobos are um, uh, apes, close relatives of chimpanzees, and they have a, a very female-oriented society. And female bonobos have been seen um, having a lot of homosexual sex. These sexual interactions help to solidify bonding between females because they cooperate together quite a bit. Uh, and they have very well-developed clitorises. <laughs> know that they certainly seem to have pleasure during sexual interactions, like in many, many primates that have been studying in the lab. Um, you know, females, you can observe them, they're grimacing, they're vocalizing, they're rolling their eyes, they're curling their toes. So having all sorts of reactions that are consistent with a pleasure response and even orgasm. So um, homosexuality in nature is super widespread. We have known this for a very long time. Um, in fact, you know, there is this famous uh, explorer who went down to the, um, uh, to the Antarctica and he, he watched the penguins behaving. This was in the 1800s. And he came back absolutely shocked to find all this diversity of sexual behavior. Uh, and so he never reported it. He like was so shocked because culturally, of course, and socially back then it was terrible. And I think that that's what's happened with many researchers. In the 90s, we had this beautiful book called Biological Exuberance that sort of brought it all back to, to everyone's face to say, oh, you think homosexual behavior is weird? Look how many animals are having it. And the examples in that book include absolutely every taxa of animals from insects, fish, birds, mammals, primates, everybody. So the question is almost not, you know, is homosexual behavior common, but it's like, who's not having it? Because it seems like everyone is having it, honestly. <music> Male and female is just one possible outcome of evolution. There are fungi that have 10,000 mating types. They're like, male, female, what's that? Of course, sex change, you know, the blue-headed rats are one of the best known example. You have one dominant male and he controls a whole group of females. But if that male dies, the next largest female becomes the male in the group. She's like, where's the male? There's no male, I'm gonna be the male. And she starts biting everyone, becoming super aggressive. And then in a matter of days, she goes from being a female with ovaries and eggs to being a male with testes and sperm. Males should be more eager and females should be more coy and that females, you know, have to be seduced and that they don't want sex as much as males do. So that was kind of like the old story. 
but a much different story has emerged more recently. So for example, with birds, we know that females are actively very sexual and they're just as, as, as you would expect with males, that when it is advantageous to have more sex, they will try to have more sex as well. People will only learn what they're exposed to. And if they never hear these topics talked about in the context of, of course, this is what animals do, this is totally normal, um, then they're not aware of it. Um, but it's also, as I was saying, uh, the fault of the scientists to some degree, because when we have seen this behavior in the past, we've been very reluctant to talk about it. The other problem is that then, even when that information has become available, is not widespread. I feel that animals are perfectly capable of having complex emotional and, and uh, inner lives. I think that the, the more we go forward, the more we're going to be hearing about this amazing um, uh, diversity of sexual strategies in, in, in nature. <laughs>